This presentation will show you how you can connect Microsoft Project Pro or Project Online to Visual Studio Team Services or Team Foundation Server. Um, to get us all started, I have made a small agenda here, which is a brief intro to what a VSTS is, because this session will be focusing on the new um, Team Services module for Visual Studio, which is only to be found in the cloud. Um, the Agile templates that it uh, comes with out of the box, the integration to Microsoft Project uh, two ways, which is also a standard out of the box feature, and the way to do various reporting and where to find specific guides on how to use the Agile uh, templates in the Visual Studio Team Services. So uh, for those who haven't learned about this before or seen it before, Visual Studio Team Services is a cloud uh, solution offered by Microsoft for uh, specific uh, projects that has to do with development. It's the place where groups and teams can work together on building code, obviously, but also tracking the work as a whole, meaning tracking the actual hours spent, remaining hours, and, and so on. Um, it's also a place that's built around the agile way of working. Um, so having sprints, Kanban boards, et cetera, is something that, that uh, VSTS, uh, in short, offers out of the box. So the Agile templates uh, are built into the tool, so you don't even have to configure it as such, which means that the way to work with Agile uh, processes um, is supported um, in the tool out of the box. So looking at the, the, the main three types that comes with the system, they all support and work around the same process. In this case, um, defining stories and requirements, which means the backlog um, and managing the work as a whole, from that point, you can then build portfolios, uh, epics, features, and so on, again, using backlogs. You can capture bugs and manage bugs as a whole. Uh, and then you have issues, which is general issues, management, and discussions. Um, the Agile template, the, the regular Agile template in this case, is shown here. Um, and out of the box, this is how it's broken down from epics, features, user stories, to tasks. And you have a place to also manage bugs that can then become tasks. Um, the other one that you can use in this case is built around CMMI, more or less the same template, but the, the difference is obviously uh, highlighted right here, the way to track issues. So if I go one step back, you'll notice that the issue tracking here is just having an issue to track and have some, some, um, some detailed information around, where in this case, um, there is more to it than just an issue. There's a risk uh, module, there's something about reviewing it and how to manage the change as a whole. There is also the third one, which is the Scrum-based, um, where we work with the backlog items, which is, again, what separates this from going back to the, the, uh, the, just the Agile module, where we have user stories. So now user stories have been changed to the backlog instead. Um, and there are obviously a lot of literature that I'm going to show you later where you can find on how to use these templates when it comes to VSTS. Um, so when you launch a project in, uh, in VSTS, you uh, simply go in and, and click Create Project. I'm going to show it live later. Um, and when you create it, you can then select your specific template, meaning Agile, SteamMI, or Scrum. You can also create your own template, which means that you can take one of the existing three runs um, and modify it and save it as your version of how to run a project. Uh, for, for many, that has to do with changing, let's say, the sprint labeling. So instead of just having sprint one, two, and three, you could uh, have sprints that supports uh, your stage gate model. So if you have an agile approach to your entire project lifecycle, you can rename the sprint one, sprint two, sprint three, um, to idea, concept, development, and so on. You can also set dates as a standard and, and so on. Um, so that's just mainly how you can create it. Um, the integration to Microsoft Project is actually uh, that once you have uh, access to VSTS, you can then install a plugin which uh, impacts the entire Office application. So PowerPoint, Excel, and Project will automatically get this team button uh, added to the ribbon up here. Uh, from where you can then get work items uh, from specific projects, work with the data, so it's a two-way synchronization. Um, and you can then also um, be sure that the data you have here, if you use Project Online, will be available in, uh, in the various Project Online, uh, meaning Project Center and so on, views. Um, so uh, so you, you connect through the Project Client all the way to, to the Project Online uh, application. Um, and that's where I'm trying to, to go through here. So uh, it is offering a two-way integration. Uh, the way to get it is not to have Visual Studio installed. It will, if you have uh, Visual Studio installed, automatically add um, the menu in your, in your ribbon. If you don't have Visual Studio and only have access to, to VSTS, 
you have to find uh, this uh, Team Foundation Server Office integration and download that. Once you've done that, it will be available in Excel, Project, and PowerPoint. Um, the way it looks is that you go into, in this case, a project. You connect to your server. Based on your user, it will normally know who you are and automatically connect. And in here, you have different project collections. Uh, I have one called Project Some Demo. And then you simply connect to the project that uh, contains the work items you want to add into your um, project plan. And then you connect. So that's pretty basic. It also adds uh, two different uh, views. So the Team Foundation Gantt view and the Task Sheet view. Uh, one is more obviously for visual represent representation of your, your work items, and the other one is to manage the actual data on each task to um, bulk edit, for instance, uh, remaining work across um, different uh, work items. Um, when you pull in data, uh, it's a matter of connecting to queries. So you can set up specific queries. Uh, it could be in some ways compared to the VBS structure. So you select um, which kind of tasks you would like Microsoft Project to receive from VSTS. Uh, you can select all, you can select your own tasks, um, or you can say, I only want tasks that are tagged uh, with the type um, or could it be feature, for instance? So depending on what level you want to bring into to, um, to Microsoft Project, you have to set up this specific query, which is something you do in VSTS. Um, so reporting-wise, getting the data out, this can be done in many ways, and that has to do with who's looking at the data. Clearly in VSTS, you have some built-in uh, charts that you can use and connect to, to your different um, projects and, and work items. Um, that's one way of viewing data. You obviously also have Power BI, and Power BI automatically um, offers you the, um, the option of connecting straight to VSTS. So you get this uh, built-in dashboard uh, automatically and free uh, and ready to use. Once you add the VSTS report package, you can select to just run uh, the data across one project or all projects. So um, that's a matter of how you bring in uh, the content pack. Thirdly, you also have Microsoft Project, which as many know, has a lot of nice built-in reports. And obviously, bringing the data in from, from VSTS into Project also allows you to use all the existing reports um, that Project has to offer out of the box, including uh, also baseline functionality and other cool Project features. User guides, um, when it comes to running Agile projects within VSTS, are pretty extensive. If you notice this um, landing page, this is the place where you'll find more or less all literature there is around how to use VSTS for Agile management. Um, so it will cover both the three different types of templates, um, so Agile, CMMI, uh, and Scrum, but it also covers what is called the scaled Agile framework. So those who are looking into the safe uh, way of running a portfolio, so Agile portfolio management, um, also have a whole area around how you can do that in VSTS. And it actually also has a template for you to get started with, so, so you can easily bring in a structure supporting the, the scaled Agile framework um, to get you started quickly. So next I'm going to show you how you can do this uh, two-way integration between Project and uh, VSTS. I'm going to show it live, so let's just go out of PowerPoint and to my VSTS portal. So this is the main page for me. I can uh, customize this page uh, so it, it suits my needs when it comes to charts and so on. I'm going to create a new project now uh, by selecting new project and my demo project, one, two, three. Uh, my description, obviously, and this is where I can select my process template. So again, out of the box, you have these three, and below each, you can do customized versions of each of them or create completely new ones if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I'm going to select the Scrum one and choose uh, TFS here to save my code. So now it's creating the project, which means it's also preparing the team, so the security around who can see what and who, who should be added to this. Um, and that's also something we have to look into in a separate session, how you can actually control the permissions for the projects and the programs and the work items um, on, on all the different levels. The project has been created now. I'm going to navigate to it, which I do like this. So this is the front page for the specific project right now. And as you can see here, uh, it first of all prompts me to, to, um, to look into do you want to manage your work or do you want to add some code? I want to manage my work because I'm going to break down this project so it goes straight to my backlog and my features up here, and that's based on the template I chose just before, so the Scrum template. And from here, I can then create, if we go a step up, uh, features by just hitting the, the new button like this, uh, my feature, for instance. And uh, if I then click on the three dots over here, from here, I can then um, add a product backlog item. 
So my item one, item two, item three, and item four. Um, on each, I can click on them and add a lot of stuff. I can add myself or another resource to, uh, to the actual task. I can come up with my description, how to do this, or what needs to be done, how to do this, and my acceptance criteria. Uh, you can add pictures and, and various other stuff, links to documentation. Uh, discussions have been added. We have priority. It's going to be 33. Effort is going to be 80 hours. Business value is 100, something we have to configure, obviously. Um, other various things we could add to it, uh, documents and so on. Um, as you can see, we have a way to associate uh, different attachments to the specific task. Um, let's try to hit save and close. Um, we can also drag from this all the way into the actual sprints, uh, but we have to then first go to the backlog items, which is this place. So here we can take uh, item one and add to sprint one. And if we go to sprint one, we now see item one. So within item one, we can then go in and, and add even more detailed tasks. So subtask A, subtask B, and subtask C. And again, obviously, assign very easily people to those specific tasks if needed, like this. And we can then again click on these subtasks and go a step further down and not only track the work, but now we can track the remaining work. So 30 hours is for doing design. It's not blocked and save. And for subtask B, I'm estimating something like 60 hours. I'm gonna save that as well. And for subtask C, let's do 20 hours. And that has to do actually with, which I forgot just before, testing, save. Subtask A, we now put in progress, the same with the B one, like this, just to get something up and running. We could also set the dates for this iteration, or for this sprint, and say sprint one, which is by the way called my first sprint, is gonna run from uh, today and until uh, same date next week, or same Friday next week, like this, save. So this is the basic way to set up a, a structure and obviously on various levels. And as I talked about previously, we can set up queries as well, which is where we connect to when we want to synchronize the work. Um, so work assigned to me, other kind of work, you can make shared qu queries that, that runs across uh, all projects so others can connect to those kind of queries. Um, so let's stop for a moment uh, within VSTS and switch to, uh, to project. So um, going out of this, and I'm gonna show it right now from a, uh, client perspective, meaning it's not connected in any ways to, to Project Online, but it would be the exact same procedure if you had to connect it to Project Online. So starting up a, a blank project like this, going to the team box up here, choosing your project, it automatically knows that we created a new one. So my demo project three is now available. I'm gonna connect to it. And then we are now seeing uh, the new views that is offered through this connector. So as mentioned before, we now have the team foundation Gantt view and the task sheet view. Now we need to bring in the actual uh, work items. I'm gonna click on the work items. And if we'd save a query, we could find it up here, shaped, uh, say, shared queries um, or any kind of other uh, queries. So let's just take a uh, work in progress for, for that sake and hit find. And it finds the two tasks that are now in progress. Um, and we select okay. And now the two tasks are added. We will see the, the item, so this is a, a task. It could have been a bug, epic feature, so all the levels we can work with in VSTS, those levels are brought into to play here as well. The same thing if you have custom uh, columns or other custom fields, we can use the column mappings to set up uh, which data from TFS or VSTS should go to which column in Microsoft Project. So we get the whole idea in here. And from that, we can then obviously use uh, the groups, tables, and, and so on, outline, uh, and whatever we want we want to work with in Microsoft Project. So from here, um, we can also switch to the view called the, uh, just going back here, the, sorry, need to find the right one. Uh, 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 uh. Sorry, sorry, I'm just getting lost here. That was, sorry, I got mixed it up here, task sheet, there we go. So remaining work is now 30 hours and 60 hours. Let's imagine that this was now 90 hours and this was uh, then 100 hours. Um, and we could set priority and so on. Let's just keep it at this basic, basic level. We're also, also gonna change maybe the title. So instead of subtask B, I'm gonna call it new name. And hit the uh, publish button up here. 
So data is now published. And if this was connected to Project Online, I would have clearly also published the entire plan. So it would go into to Project Online and the database that Project uh, runs with. So going back to my VSTS overview and hitting the refresh button, I'm going back to my backlogs. There we go. You'll now see the new uh, remaining hours have just popped into our, our um, sprint. And on the specific tasks, you can also see that the name has changed. Um, and this is basically how it runs. So two-way synchronization, where you can manage both the estimates, the actual hours, the remaining hours, who's doing what and when. And from within project, obviously, we can connect to project online, but we can also use the reports in here. So once the, uh, the tasks begin to get some actuals on it, so this task is now done, this is 50% done, well, the reports will, will start to work as well, so the burn down effect will be, uh, will be available for you. And all the other cool reports, such as who is doing what, um, are they doing too much for that sake, and so on. So that's basically how it, it works. Um, and that's what I wanted to, to show you in this presentation. I will create more videos on this topic going forward, especially focusing on the uh, scaled agile framework, which is uh, also a template you can add into um, VSTS. Thanks for now, and I hope you enjoyed it.